word of the Lord is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. A light for my path. The word of the Lord is a lamp and a light for my path. Amen. Jump over to, to uh, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. And I'm going to talk to you about that old song used to say, This little light of mine. Tell somebody, say, My light is growing. Amen. You see the new lights, the new, new, new flashlights that be advertising on TV at night, the LED lights that they say that the army, the military uses. I don't know if they use them like that, right? But the thing is shining up everywhere, right? It's not a little light, though, is it? It's not a little light. He said, we say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Look at somebody say, my light is getting brighter. My light is getting brighter. Amen? Hallelujah. How long have you been serving God? If you've been serving God for years, your light should be getting brighter. Amen? It should be dim and going out. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says, in Psalms, in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 45, it says, the Bible says, arise, shine. Because your neighbor said, arise, shine. Arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amen. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people. Gross darkness. Think about that word, gross darkness. Darkness covers the earth, but gross I mean, if we were to define that word gross, if I ask you to define that word gross, what comes to mind? What comes to mind about if you say that? That's gross. That's gross. Lifestyle. Uh, awful. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen. The Bible says in another place that his glory shall be seen in all the earth. But right now, Isaiah is telling us that his glory shall be seen upon you. Get it now. And the Bible tells us in the song that his glory shall fill the earth. That means you need to get busy. We need to get busy. Because Isaiah says this glory is going to be seen on us. This glory is going to be seen on us. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and the Gentiles shall come to your light, and keeps to the brightness of your rising, and keeps shall come to the brightness of your rising, not your shining, but your rising. You're taking a stand and giving up. You're taking a stand and saying, thus saith the Lord. You're taking a stand and saying, the, the Bible says, the word of God says, I don't care what man says, the word of God says. You take your stand. You're rising up. Amen? Verse 5 says, look at, look at verse 5 says, Then thou shalt see. Then thou shalt see. We will see. What, what, we will see why everything is going the way it is. We will see why COVID-19 happened. I've been asking, you what? Know, it's happening. We will see why uh, the, uh, the riots and the protest is going on. We will see the truth. Amen? Then thou will see and flow together and flow together and your heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea seas shall be converted unto thee. The forces, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Amen. We will see a manifestation of God. What God is doing. Hey, y'all, y'all, we're so focused on what Satan's doing. We're so focused on what the world is doing, but we need to be focused on God, what are you doing? What are you doing? I, I like the story of the great woman. It comes across by the great woman in the book of 2 Kings. And, and when Elisha, the prophet, when he had prophesied to the woman that you're going to have a son, she didn't ask for a son. He said, What shall we do for this woman who's been careful for us? We serve David and Gehazi. And he said, She doesn't have a child. And, she, and he said, Well, you put dogs to bring the woman to me. And when she came to him, he said, This time, according to the time of life, you're going to give birth to a son. You're going to give birth to a son. And 
guess what? She gave birth to a son, and then during the process of time, this woman was in the field with his dad, sorry, and he died. He died. And the woman, I like the woman's reaction. She was a great woman. Great woman. You can tell how great she was by the way she reacted to adversity in her life. And it says, she told her husband, her husband said, take him to his father. And when she got him, she put him in the upper room where she had built the room for the prophet. And she said, she told her husband, I need to go see the prophet. And he said, hey, it's almost evening. Don't let travels this time. It's dangerous. I mean, she said, it, it is well. It is well. And then when she came up, she told her, 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 her servant, she said, ride quickly and get me to the prophet. And on the way there, the prophet sees her coming. And he says to the servant, hey, I said, what, what the woman doing in this time? There's something must be wrong. And so he says to her, he says, go out and see if she's okay. And she goes, she said, are you well? She said, it is well. It is well. And then when she gets to the man of God, she said, I didn't ask for a son, but you gave me one. And now he's dead. And I like the prophet's reaction. He said, the Lord didn't show me that. The Lord didn't show me that coming. The Lord didn't show me that. And he says, go get the, right with her back, and I'm coming right behind you. And he would pray for the son, and he recovered. Now, we read about that, but that's what, that's what uh, prophet, the name of the person, he became a prophet later on himself. When you read the book of Habakkuk, that was Habakkuk. That's what his name means. Recovered from dead. Recovered from the death. Amen? Think about that. The woman's reaction was, it is well. All hell may be breaking the loose, but it is well. It is well. It is well. That's what her reaction we were sick of it. Now, you imagine everybody around was watching how she reacted. Her light shining with her rising up. She could have went into mourning. She could have went into sorrow. But she got up and said, it is well. It is well. Until I get an answer from God, it is well. God is the final answer. Is that your final answer? Let me ask you that today. I like what he says, what Isaiah says. He says, the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon you. Let's talk about the glory a little bit, right? And I'll give you a definition of the glory. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 33, verse 18 to 20. And it talks about the glory of the Lord. And I want you to get this in your spirit today, amen? We're going to talk about the glory. Think about somebody saying the glory is the light of God, amen? In, in Exodus chapter 33, Moses is having a conversation with God. And God is telling him what he wants to do. And Moses is asking God for some things, saying, Lord, can you go with us into the promised land? Because the Lord got a little frustrated with the children of Israel. He said, uh, 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 I'm going to send my angel with you. I'm going to send my angel. Moses said, no, don't send your angel. He said, if you can't go with us, we don't want to go. I don't want to go. He said, Lord, anyway, I don't want to go. The children of Israel may go without you, but I don't want to go anywhere without you. Amen? And so Moses gets in a conversation with God. He says, by the way, Lord, show me your glory. I like that. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. And he, it says, it says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness. I like that. Uh, we should ask the Lord for his glory right now, huh? Because look at his response. He says, and I will make all my goodness. Before thee. I, I like that. I, I like that. The Bible says the blessings will overtake us. Amen. He says, I'll make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not, canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. I, I, I put a little note here, it says, the glory looks like this. This is why I say, the glory looks like this. I look at the neighbor next to you and say, the glory looks like you. The glory looks like you. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7, the glory looks like this. This is what the glory is. Oh, I want to see God's glory. Tell somebody, say, you're looking at it, you're looking at it, you're looking at it, amen. Now, we get a little, we get a little, brother, don't be conceited, don't be taking glory. Well, if God put his glory on me, he put it there, amen. And you get it, amen. And that's why we sing that song. We're here to take over, not here to take side. We're taking the authority, amen. Look at the glory, look at the glory. It says, and the Lord passed before him 
and proclaim the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. Look at the glory of God. And the glory of God, it's almost like you're reading uh, Galatians chapter 5. And these are the fruit of the Spirit love, joy, peace, long suffering. The glory is actual. The thing that we're supposed to be performing. Goodness. Mercy. Justice. Look at what he says. He says, by no means clearing the guilty. When someone does a, a guilt, something, a, a, a bad act, guess what? God is looking. And he said already, he says, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. I shall repay. Amen? That means I don't have to tear anything up. Because he said, vengeance is here. Put it somebody said, give it to God. Give it to God. He always says, he, by no means, clear the guilty. You know, what does that mean for those that are saying? He doesn't clear us of our guilt. He said, you forgive us. Amen? God knows everything we did. But he forgave it. He forgave it, but he still got it. Am I right? Just like we do with our children. Right? We forgive them, but we still got it. Am I right? Not what they did, but we forgive them. Amen? He says, by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity upon the fathers should be children for 34th generation. I, I like that because that tells us how long God is willing to put up with us. Three or four hundred years. Three or four hundred years. I put up with three or four hundred years. He says, I love those that love me to a thousand generations. Amen? A thousand years. Amen? But those that just turn it back on me, that's why he told the children of Israel, he told Abraham when they was going to get ready to go to the promise land, he said, I promise you this land, Abraham, but uh, the, 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 the inhabitants of the land got another 400 years. They got another 400 years. I'm going to put them in there. You, you know, just like my, sounds like my mother and my father talking to me. And you got another, you got another minute. Amen. He didn't give me 400 years. They just gave me a few minutes. Amen. Uh, Sometimes they just didn't have to tell me what they were thinking. They just looked at me. Am I right? They just look at you. Right? Be in church acting up and they just give you that look. And it didn't have to be my mother. It could be any one of the mothers in the church. <laughs> they give you that look. Amen. And you got another minute. God says you got another three, four hundred years and that's it. That's it. Amen. Look at that. The Lord God Almighty, His glory. This is like His glory. Mercy. Merciful. Gracious. Long suffering. Abundant in goodness and truth. Abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy. Keeping mercy. Forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin. Forgiving. Wow. Okay. I don't want to call it the glory. Am I right? Is that what you said? The, the, disciples, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, how often shall we forgive? One or two times? And Jesus said, what did he say? What was his answer? Seven times, seven. Seven times seventy. How was the answer to that? Four hundred and ninety times. And so we said, well, okay. I ain't there. <laughs> I ain't there. But look at somebody say, get there. Look at somebody say, get there. Amen. God has given you the power to forgive. Whether you like it or not. The only thing that's stopping us from forgiveness, we don't want to. Amen. Let the glory shine. Look at somebody say, let the glory shine. The glory shine. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Joseph says that we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine. Excuse me. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light shine before men. 
if the light is small, it can't be seen. It can't be seen. I'll show you why in a minute. It can't be seen if the light is small. That's why we don't say this little light of mine. We don't say this little light of mine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Let your light so shine before men so that they can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. God can only get glory when you let your light shine so that men can see your good works. So that our Father in heaven, you, you can't steal God's glory. You can't steal God's glory. If you're shining, he's getting glory. I'm going to be honest. If Kelsey's shining, I get glory. If all of y'all shining, my wife is glory. You look just like your mom. You look just like your dad. And you act like it too. You need to talk like it. I get know. About, about, about years ago when Kelsey was about five years old and we had a little basketball co competition. We used to have a basketball competition every year down at the, uh, the uh, Coast Guard base because we get everybody there. And I, we would challenge all the young guys to a game of basketball because you know all the young guys really think they could play. Right? We get the older guys. And to this, to this day, they have never beat us. And I'm like that catch his basketball coach. I told him, your son's growing up and Chris ain't gonna be beating you. He ain't gonna never be able to beat me. He ain't gonna never be able to beat me. I'm trying to tell him age is gonna take over and he's gonna beat you one day. Oh, he ain't never be able to beat me. I think that'd be good. So when I got over, make sure I was gonna play. So I called a bunch of my friends that I knew that college ball. They was in their 30s and 40s. Eric Hurd, Pastor Eric Hurd. Some other friends of mine that I know they play ball. <laughs> they play ball. Because I knew I can't play. And I remember I had Eric, Eric was there, he was watching my son play and running down the court with him. He said, Kelsey, where did he get that from? He didn't get that from you. <laughs> now we know you can't play. <laughs> where did he get that from? <laughs> but I can stand it, they're like me, you know, as he grew up 30 years from now, everybody be looking at me, oh yeah, huh? everybody got that from me. Amen. <laughs> when he's shining, I get glory. Amen. I was listening to a testimony today from a golfer, a pro golfer, uh, he never, uh, what was it, uh, Bison Deshevo, Deshevo, yeah, and he was, he, was, he, was, uh, he was testifying about his dad needed a kidney, and he was testifying, he said, because I was good at golf, because I became really good at golf, I made, I made friends with a, a, a particular guy, an older guy in golf, and he said, he was just you know, they talking to my dad, uh, one of the guys in the PGA, and he said, his dad from the end, I just prepared that I gave his kidney. And he said, oh, you need a kidney. And he said, oh. And he said, um, what, 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 what's your blood type? And he told me, he said, oh, that's my blood type. And when I was doing it, he went down to self-testing and gave this man a kidney. Okay? Because his son, because of the man's son, think what God will do because of you rising up there shining. And showing somebody the love of God, showing somebody the mercy of God, showing somebody the goodness of God. And the Bible tells us, love our enemy. Amen? Look at that. Look at that. Chuck, uh, uh, verse 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine so they can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And light is associated with good works. Look at that now. Light is associated with not what you say, but what you do. Amen? Life is associated with not what you say, it's associated with what you do. It's not associated with what you say about a circumstance, it's associated with how you act. Amen? How you act, how you respond. The ministry of God will be completely furnished for all good works. How do you believe that? The ministry of God that you are taking up will be completely furnished for all good works. Amen? And this person who's letting their lifestyle can go out into the world of darkness and shine. Can go into a world of darkness and shine. And in that world of darkness, the glory of the Lord can be seen. The glory of the Lord can be seen on us through our good works. Our good works. If there's no darkness in us, now get this now, if there's no darkness in us, 
Last week we learned that people love darkness because their deeds were evil. People love darkness. In Luke chapter 11, verse 34 to 36, Jesus says, The light, look at somebody say the word. The light of the body, the word of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye is seen, when the eye is single, the whole body is also full of light. The whole body is full of light. But when the eye is evil, the whole body also is full of darkness. In other words, as I'm saying, if I'm saying, kill them all, Lord, the whole body is full of darkness. The whole body is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light Somebody didn't say the word. The word which is in thee be not darkness. The word that is in thee cannot be darkness. It has to be light. It has to be the word of God. Thy word, O Lord, is the light. To my, be a light to my path. Amen. If the whole body will be full of light, full of the word of God, having no dark part, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle do give thee light. Let me give you a definition of the idea single. The idea single. Somebody say, uh, SLR, SLR. How many you know what that means? SLR, anybody know what that means? Let me, for, for the young people today, DL, DSLR. That's just digital now, right? Isn't it? Single lens reflex. Single lens reflex. How many got a camera that's See what that's that's a large camera. See, you got one hand back there. You got another hand over here, right? You got another hand there. Years ago, when they were first making cam cameras, years ago, back in our days, you had two types of camera. And if you could get your SLR camera, you was the like, happy person to work with. They still have like, space to market. Well, how many of you just had what they're doing? Pull that camera and say to you. You know, they, they just pop out, right? Because you could pull on it. You couldn't afford the kid. <laughs> I had a whole set of probably fifteen hundred dollars because I got into the Navy and I was a buyer. I, that, that, camera, that system really cost about three thousand dollars, but it was nice SLR camera. Right? And the definition of an SLR camera was: it says, "Get this now." It says, "Denoting or relating to a reflex camera in which the lens that forms the image on the film also provides the image in the viewfinder." In other words, what you see is what you get. Is that you? Look at somebody say, is that you? What you see is what you get. Amen. What you see is what you get. This is me. I'm not acting like I love you. I love. Amen. What you see is what you get. Get this down. Let me, let me, let me uh, translate that. What you see is what you get. In other words, the same lens that forms the image in my heart and mind should be the same lens that provides the image that I see. Come on now. The same lens that provides the image in my heart, my heart and my mind should be the same lens that provides the image that I see. The same lens. The same lens, eh? The same lens, somebody. The same lens. The way I see you. The way I see the world. The way I see my day, today, tomorrow. The posts I get from people about current events reveal the way they see the world. Isn't that something? The post you put up on Facebook reveals the way you see the world. The post you put up on Instagram reveals the way you see the world. The way you see things, amen? But the way I see you should be through the lens of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God, amen? I don't care what you look like today. I still need to see you, uh, just like the same as saying, I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now, amen? I don't care. The way I see you should be through the word of God, amen? If I see you as evil, it should be through the word of God. Right. Not through what the world says. 
about you. Amen? How many know that everybody standing on the face of the earth right now at this very minute, very minute has an opportunity to change? Do you believe that? Do you live that? Do you live like they have the opportunity to change? Let me ask you another question. Do you give them the opportunity? Do you give them the opportunity? You know the greatest leaders in the military are those that are given to them the opportunity to change, am I right? To give them the opportunity to change. Years ago when I was running crazy and acting up, I remember I did some things that they brought me to a captain's mask. And I remember, I remember the captain said, I had people on one side of me speaking up for me. E8s and E9s and my division officer speaking up for me and one E5 speaking against me. And, and, and the captain was said, he said, nothing wrong here. He said, I just don't see right here. He said, you seem like you're a pretty good guy. He said, I'm going to give you five days down in the breed. I'll let you see what it's like down there. Right? So, so, you, may not, you don't want to spend your time down there. You don't want to spend your time down there. He was right. I don't know if they don't do that in the army now, but they do three days bread and water. Three days of just bread and water. Is, you, you be all bloated. What are you talking about? What kind of water break day in the morning? <laughs> Don't spend three days eating bread and water, you'll get understand what that feels like. Amen. <laughs> he, he said, you can spend a five, this five days, just five days. All it took was five days. <laughs> I ain't coming back down here no more. Ain't coming back down. I didn't like saving for everything I had to go do. <laughs> the Marines make you save for everything. You want to go to the restroom? You got to save first. <laughs> I said, they do a little chair and all that. You know? It's a humbling experience. And then they can put you to do some work that you can say, I don't never want to do. Greg knows something about this because he made people do it. Chipping barnacle off the bottom of a boat. That's going to smell awful. <laughs> and your whole day is consumed with that. Wake up in the morning, start chipping. Go eat breakfast, come back, start chipping. Go eat lunch, come back, start chipping. Go eat dinner, come back, and say a little prayer and go to bed. <laughs> and you're ready to do it again the next day, amen? We should see everybody through the lens of the gospel. Are you getting this today? I want to tell you, most of us are not Christ-like, are we? We don't see it that way, right? We don't see the world that way. How should we see it? I want to get close with this. How should we see? Let's get the praise to you. Come back up. How shall we see? Look at the day and how shall we see? Amen? Look at somebody say, the light of the word. The light of the word. The light of the gospel, the light of the word of God, the whole Bible, not just part of, not just the New Testament, but 